testing, testing. Hey, um, can everyone hear me clearly? Right, I can see the uh, I can see our attendees streaming in. Can you can you hear me? Can you see me? Right. Um, we are streaming. We are streaming from Zoom. We are streaming from YouTube. We are streaming from Facebook. Right. So okay, I can see the question. Okay, cool. Can see people coming in. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, Bargaf, nice to see you. Right, we've got Charles, we've got George, we've got Alex, uh, Alan, nice to see you too. Uh, Guzman, nice to see you come back. Mafano, uh, Amada, nice to see you all. Right, it, when you're sending the messages, you know, you can send it to hosts and panelists and you can also send it to everyone, right? So uh, there's a little drop down list where you can do. So if you want to chat with the other fellow attendees over here, other fellow tick mill traders, right? Uh, this would be a great way to do it. <laughs> I'm not sure if, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys should be able to send the message messages through on Facebook and YouTube too. Oh yeah, cool. Uh, Ismail, I see you, right? Kokwai, right? Rashid, I see you too, right? Thank you guys for tuning in, right? Today will be a pretty fun session, right? Um, uh, our focus is on part of this uh, bigger Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. Uh, for now, it's every fortnight, but we're going to move towards maybe a, a weekly a weekly series, right? Um, today's session, right? If um, today's the third session of, I think, six or seven sessions, right? Um, our first one was an introduction to, or actually it might be the fourth session already, right? We have an intro to Forex. We have um, Fundamentals 101, Technical Analysis 101, right? Today, we're going to do a deep dive into support and resistance, which forms the foundation of a lot of what we use to trade, okay? Now, I want to encourage you guys that um, I literally have another screen that is open here watching the questions come through. So if you can, right, please, um, yes, uh, do, do not wait until um, the end of the um, webinar to send your questions through because let me guarantee you there will not be any time uh, for us to answer questions if things go as, uh, as it traditionally does. You know, we rarely have time to attend to questions, right? So let me just... Make sure everything's running fine. Okay, everything's running fine. Restream. Everyone on YouTube can hear me. Everyone on Facebook can hear me. Everyone on Zoom can hear me. I can see everyone's questions. Now let's begin uh, today's session. All right, let me, let's begin today's session. Okay, now of course, first and foremost, before we begin, disclaimer, guys, and remember that everything in this webinar is educational in nature. Nothing should be construed as investment or trading advice. So please do your own little due diligence before you guys trade, all right? Now, um, moving on, right? Your host for today, right? Um, for those of you guys who are here for the first time, right? In fact, yeah, who, who is here for the first time, right? Uh, perhaps you can do a quick raise of hands, right? So I can know um, if you're here for the first time, I can direct you to, to, the, to the correct places, right? Um, we've got Richie's here for the first time. Welcome, welcome. Guzman here for the first time, right? Nice to see you. Rashid, I'm not sure if you're here for the first time, but... Nice to see you guys. So I can see people raising their hands, right? Um, awesome, right? Okay, if you're here for the first time, you're wondering, who is this person, <laughs> right? Who is this person? Let me uh, let me uh, do a quick introduction about myself. Uh, Amada, it's your second time. That's great. That's great. So you must have joined me like uh, two weeks ago or something, right? So this is me, uh, Desmond Leong, right? So I run the uh, award-winning research firm, uh, Everest Fortune Group. So um, this... Uh, it's a partnership with Tickmill where we're bringing you guys the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the stuff that I take your trading to the next level, right? We are finalists for the best FX research 2019, 2020, 2021, best equity research in 2020 and 2021. You know, we usually I'll provide, um, we work with the major financial institutions out there and we have a special partnership with Tickmill uh, to bring, you know, you guys um, very high grade education, the stuff that you don't find on baby pips, the stuff that you don't find on Forex Factory, nothing against them, but yeah, you know, the good stuff. All right. So we have testimonials of people, you know, who, who has seen their trading turn around, right? Going from 40% to 60% hit rate, 60 to 80% hit rate, unprofitable, profitable, right? It's all a case, right? If there's any word of encouragement I want to share with you guys, you don't need 30 years. Um, you, don't, you don't need to be 30 years in trading to be profitable, right? It can be like me, you know, just uh, a little bit, you know, 32 I'm 32 years old, right? But you know, I, I, 30 days, right? 30 days focusing on the right things, right? Can help you turn your trading around. And that's why I want to encourage you guys, right? You don't need to go on a, a crazy course spending uh, $30,000, $3,000 just to learn the right stuff, right? Over here at Tick Mill, we're bringing you guys, you know, a high grade education, right? Um, filter, meaning that we went through the wrong stuff. So we know how to teach the right stuff, right? And we're teaching you here today, Right, so um, 
I, I'm going to teach things slightly differently. I have my, uh, my take on support and resistance, supply and demand is slightly different from the traditional approaches and I find it has worked pretty well uh, in our trading strategies. So if you need to clarify, don't hesitate to ask questions right away, right? Whether in YouTube, Facebook or um, Zoom, all right? Now let's begin today's session. Hey, Salvador, tuning in for the first time, welcome. Okay, so today's session, what, uh, what can we expect in today's session, all right? There are a couple of things that we're going to focus on, right? Uh, focus on traditional swing highs and swing lows, right? Um, it's, it sounds a little bit simple, but I'm going to show you what um, constitute what I call significant swing highs um, or significant swings and what constitute insignificant swings because the danger when we trade often lies uh, when we look at the insignificant swing highs and the insignificant swing lows. You know, we place importance where it's not important. Right, and that is you know in trading, right? It's it's important to, uh, to apply discretion. It's important to apply filter. You know, um, how some people, you know, they are um, they are purists, meaning that they they treat pure price action. Right? You know, it's just pure candlestick charts. And then there are people who um, go the other extreme. They throw every single indicator that you know, right? Whether it's a stochastic, you know, moving averages, alligators, right? Um. I don't know, uh, envelopes, right? You know, every word in the dictionary, right? They just throw it there, right? They have all these different indicators and they get, you know, um, what you call analysis paralysis, right? You know, you're, you, you have too many things you don't know how to make a proper trade from there, right? You need to find a proper balance, right? And that's all things. Um, and that uh, is an important lesson which I want to teach you guys today, you know, is um, knowing when to say no to an indicator, knowing when to say no to a particular analysis and knowing when to say yes, to one because um, it's the, the world of trading is very different, right? It's very different from the world of academia, right? The world of academia just tells you that you just need to study, 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 and all will be well, right? Study, um, uh, I've said it a couple of times, right? But you know, in the world of academia, they say that in the more you study, the higher your chances on passing the exam, the higher your chance of doing well. Right. And for the sake of the people who are here for the first time, it is very different um, when it comes to trading. The more you study does not guarantee you uh, a better trading result. And that, um, that kind of clashes with what uh, most people understand uh, the way they've been brought up. Right? They've been brought up thinking that all they need to do is to study. Right? Study and you do well. Right. I study more about Forex. I study more about trading. I'm supposed to do well. But that is not true. In Forex trading, um, it is partially true you need to study the right stuff okay let me repeat that again you need to study the right stuff right as one of my favorite sayings is that one of the worst things to do in life is to run full speed in the wrong direction okay so imagine you have a 100 meter race everyone's running in the correct direction you're running in the wrong direction you need to u-turn you need to make up for all the distance they ran wrongly just to catch up with them and that's the danger in trading right sometimes uh the, the stuff you find on baby pips of stuff we find on uh, the different forums out there, right? We might learn it, but it might be the wrong stuff, right? We might get a, a, a false sense of confidence that, hey, you know, um, I'm learning stuff here. I'm going to be a good trader, right? I know how moving averages work. I know how correlation work. I know how to use it in trading, but you're only looking at it from one person's perspective. And often, you know, if, if you hold on to that, right, um, you might, it, it might um, cause you, you know, uh, cause you take losses, for example. Now, for example, I, I want to touch on one topic just to illustrate this. Okay, when you guys trade, how many of you guys have fixed take profits and fixed stop losses? Or how many of you guys don't have a fixed take profit or fixed stop loss? Can you get just uh, maybe type in the questions, uh, question section, so I know how many of you guys are Let's, let me make sure it's chat. Yeah, chat is working. Yeah, how many of you guys uh, use fixed take profits? And how many of you guys use variable um, take profit and stop loss levels? Right, so I can get a quick gauge. Two participants. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Right, I noticed that this is not arranged alphabetically. <laughs> okay. All right, okay, okay. Uh, I can see uh, quite a number of answers come true, right? If some of you guys fix stop loss, fix stop loss, yes. Fix take profit, not really by Alan, right? Amada, every uh, available uh, available stop loss, variable for gold, 
always set stop loss fix you know fix take profit adjustable stop loss not sure what the difference is <laughs> it's quite concerning jonathan right but don't worry that's what you're here for fix stop loss right okay so so that's the thing right so that's one of the dangers when it comes to trading right um so sometimes people take a trade let me see if i got my handy dandy little pen over here okay i have a handy dandy pen over here right so the problem with a fix like let's just say right um you take a trade over here okay let's talk about swing lows now all right uh price has a swing low over here there's a swing low over here right you can see that there's a this you know there's one swing low and there's two swing lows over here right and you take a trade let's just say you take a trade over here this is the trade where you enter and you want to it's a bullish trade right like it's bull you're expecting it to go up right and you have this swing low support would you put your stop loss over here, right? I'm going to call it A. Or will you put your stop loss over here, B? Will you put it at A or would you put it at B? Let's see the answers of you guys right now. Quite a number of you guys saying B. Uh, we got Kelvin who is saying A, right? Got B. Uh, Amada saying A. We got Felix B, 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 B. All right, the majority of you guys are saying B, right? And the concept of that, right? You can immediately grasp the concept that, you know, it's good to put your stop loss slightly beyond to give it that bit of breathing space. Now, the problem is that you look at this. You have a preference. You have a preference for your stop loss, right? The distance from here, from your entry to your stop loss, right? Might be 110 pips, right? It could be 110 pips over here. But if, you follow some kind of trading strategy online, you know, this master guru or something says that, hey, whenever you enter a trade, remember, put a stop loss of, a one, of 100 pips, right? Maybe 100 pips might have you um, putting the stop loss at A instead, right? Over here, A is 100, B is 110. Now you got a problem, right? You are putting your stop loss at an unoptimal spot because of the strategy you're using that requires you to have a fixed stop loss or a fixed take profit, right? What I'm trying to drive at here is that in trading, it's important to look at what the market is telling you, right? If the market tells you that there are two major swing low levels here and price is unlikely to come down, even if price comes down here, it's likely to bounce up, right? It means that it's better for you to put your stop loss slightly beyond. Give yourself that little bit of breathing space. Okay, and that can only be done if you use a variable stop loss, meaning that you look at what the market is telling you before you put your stop loss. You look at what the market is telling you before you put a take profit, right? And that is how you avoid, you know, in, in cases where you always get stopped out and then the market starts going up in the direction where you inte originally intended it to do, right? That is a case of, um, um, it's not that your strategy is bad. Right, but instead it's more of your stop loss placement. You need to optimize your stop loss placement. So when it comes to trading, right, when you're looking at swing lows or swing highs, stop loss, remember, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a cheat um sheet over here, right? Stop loss beyond. Okay, try to put it beyond a key level. Okay, and take profit. You can try to put it before before a key level. Okay. Yeah, variable is better, more analysis. I'm glad uh, you understand it now, Jonathan, right? And yeah, so that's important thing when, you know, when it comes to uh, this kind of webinars, right? You just, uh, if anytime you have a question, right? You just send it right through. You know, we can address you on the spot. You know, you don't need to wait, uh, you know, wait for months uh, or weeks or months before you learn that the hard way, right? And I can share with you my insights on why, you know, you should have fixed stop loss, fixed take profit. Variable stop loss, variable take profit. But now without further ado, let's start diving a little bit into swing highs and swing lows. Okay. Okay, swing highs and swing lows. Let's see, have it here. Okay. Now, um, swing highs and swing lows need to be this thing called significant. I'm going to highlight this word here, significant, right? Because many times in trading, right, we tend to look at things that are not, um, not so significant. And if they're not significant, they're not going to be effective. So in this example, right, I'm showing you that prices, right, um, when you're looking at a chart, right, these movements are very significant. Now, you would better understand this when I show you the contrast on what is insignificant. 
what's the insignificant swing high and swing low. All right. So this, of course, this is the wrong way, right? Look at this. Every single level here is a swing, you know, it's a, it's a swing high and swing low. So it's not very effective when it comes to trading. So the danger of, of this is that when people sometimes look at swing highs and swing lows, they get too, um, they get too caught up. They place, they place too big of a significance. They place too big of importance on small little levels that don't make too much sense. Right. So in this example here, you can see, you know, small little movements, small little movements, right? If you consider every single one of these uh, important swing low, swing low, swing high, swing low, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be too many levels, right? And often in trading, the money is made not buying, uh, the money is made not only in getting in the right trades, but it's also by avoiding the bad trades, right? So how you avoid the bad trades is by filtering out, in this case, for example, insignificant swing highs and insignificant swing lows. Okay. Now, um, now what are the, the um, now what, what is the what is the what are significant swings? This is an example of significant swings, right? You know, you can see it's nice big low, nice big high, right? When nice big low, nice big highs, and these are big levels that the market are respecting, right? Anyone universally who looks at this level knows that price came up to here, touched this level, and it really, really retraced. So, so Godfrey um, is actually asking a pretty good question. Is the chart daily, right? So what he means is this, is, he, is it referring to the D1 chart? Is he referring to the H4 chart? Is it referring to the H1 chart? You know, is it maybe referring to the M5 chart? Now, the, the, it's, how to better explain this is that the time frame doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether it's a daily time frame. It doesn't matter whether it's the H4, H1 time frame. And that's why I've prepared charts to kind of give you a better um, yes, bar graph. That's a really, really great answer. Right? Pattern matter, not so much time frame. So let, let, let's throw up this chart on the dollar index here. Okay, let's throw up this chart on the dollar index. Now let's just say, right, we're looking over here. Um, and we're thinking, man, you know. This is not that great. You know, this is not, these are small little levels. Okay. They're not all that great. Correct. We're looking at it and maybe besides this little swing high at the top, you know, the rest of them are just, you know, not that impressive. However, this is on the H4 chart. What looks insignificant on the four hour time frame, if you move to the one hour time frame, suddenly these levels, these things that I was drawing previously, Whoa, they look a lot more significant, right? This bounce, this reversal, this reversal from the top, this bounce from here, right? This movement from here, this movement, suddenly they look a lot more significant, right? So what doesn't look significant on the, on the one day time frame might look significant on the four hour time frame. That's where you can actually jump in. Uh, um, that's, that's called a uh, sort of multi time frame kind of analysis, um, which I will touch on a little bit later. Right, so then begs the question, okay, something is not significant on the four hour time frame, but it's significant on the one hour time frame. Do we use it to trade or do we not use it to trade? Okay, now the answer to this question depends on your trading horizon and your trading strategy. What that means is that if your trading strategy, okay, let, 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 let's have a little bit of a QA and a session over here. If you were, if you were a day trader, all right. If you are a day trader, and the trades you hold often do not last longer than a day, right? Meaning that you try to close the trade off by the end of the day, right? What is the time frame you should be using? What time frames do you use? Okay, All right, we got a couple of answers. All answers are pouring in, right? Okay, we got uh, M1 time frame, right? By Fernandez. Whoa, okay, that's intense, man. I'm not sure if you're meaning the one minute time frame or the one month time frame. M1 time frame, four hour, uh, 15 minute, one hour, four hour, D1 time frame, one day time frame, or the H4 time frame by Amada. All right, one hour, 15, 
Uh, do you want uh, no longer the H4, H1, H4? Okay, most of the answers are in the H1 time frame, H4 time frame, and some in the one minute time frames, right? Some, I think one person referenced the daily time frames. Now, guys, okay, the next key question which I'm going to ask you if you were, right, um, oh, wait, clockwise says it's the H1 and M30 time frame, okay, okay. Now, if you were a swing, okay, if you were a position trader, meaning that trades you held are usually held for about one week to one month, right, to a couple of months, what time frame do you use to trade? Right, we got Charles answering the D1 time frame. We got Alex uh, and Christian saying it's the daily time frame, right? Minimum H4 and higher. Day week one month, right? By by Martio, right? Week one, one day, one week, H4 plus, right? I uh, can see the answers pouring in, right? And you notice that a lot of the answers are very different, right? Are very different from the first question I answered. I, I first, the first question I asked, right? So depending on your time horizon, you will change the, sen the time sensitivity of your trade. And that is how you determine significance of swing high, swing low, significance of chart patterns, right? If you were looking at the H1, if you were a day trader, then you, this, would be the, this would be the swing highs and swing lows that you are um, focusing on because you are a day trader. Right, the trades that you hold on to um, usually last within the day. The best time frames you can use for, I tend to gravitate towards the H1, right? And uh, maybe the H4 chart. Why H4 chart might not be universally applicable for daily, uh, for day traders is because um, depending on the markets that you trade, some markets are only active for about eight hours, right? And not so active for the rest, right? Depending on the CFD that you trade, right? But otherwise, yeah, you can see um, Kelvin, yeah, of uh, sums it up pretty well, right? Daily, weekly, and monthly, sometimes H4 for the longer term time frames, right? Uh, if you're a swing trader. So if you're a swing trader, right? So I know it's a long answer to a short question, but I think it's a very important learning point, which I wanted to expand on, is that when you ask what time frame, whenever someone is teaching something and you think like, oh man, what time frame is that? Remember, the time frame does not matter, right? The pattern, the approach matters. Right. And the time frame only matters depending on the strategy that you're using. Are you a scalper? Scalpers kind of look at the five minute, 15 minute, at most the one hour charts. Are you a day trader? H1, H4, maybe, maybe reference the daily charts, you know, for um, the key levels, right? Um, are you a swing trader? Are you a position trader? Because depending on that, then you adjust the sensitivity of your analysis. Okay. Now, um, the next thing that we're going to touch on. All right, next thing that we're going to touch on, I'm going to bring us back um, to this chart over here, right? Multiple swing highs and multiple swing lows, all right? Single swings here, all right? Uh, they are not very strong. They, they are, <clears throat> you can highlight good resistance and good support, but they are not necessarily very strong. Now, we got over here, these are multiple swings, okay? And they tend to be stronger. I'm going to ask you guys a question. Uh, you guys can answer it while I go and try to grab some water because I'm very thirsty. <laughs> right, I forgot to get water for myself, right? How many swing highs, right, should you combine ideally, minimally, you know, for a uh, swing high resistance to be considered strong? Is it two, three, four, five? I'm going to let you guys uh, make quick guess now while I rush off and Hey guys, I'm back, right? Okay, I like, I uh, see a lot of answers say two. Some of you guys say two or three max, uh, more than a zone starts to weaken. I, uh, well, I like the reference to zone, right? It's a very smart answer, right? 
Hamid says three me three trillion three thousand three hundred and thirty three or something, right? Uh, I don't think you can find that many. Uh, <laughs> cannot find that many swing highs in a row. That'll probably be the best. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Right? I know you mean three. All right. Okay. A lot of you guys answer two, three, two, three, three. Right. <clears throat> yeah. No one answered one, which is correct. No, multiple, multiple levels. Right. So, ideally, right. Ideally, you want three. Three is a sweet spot. <clears throat> okay. Three is a sweet spot when you're looking at multiple swing highs. You know, looking uh, minimally for one, two. I I forgot how to write my numbers. One, two, three. Three is the minimum level, and of course. You don't need the levels to line up exactly. So you notice in this example, one level is higher, one level is lower. And look what I did, right? I highlight a level and you highlight an area, right? So <clears throat> as you're trading, most of the time, right? Um, you don't, uh, not all levels will line up exactly at a, at a single peak, right? Uh, especially swing high, swing lows, right? Uh, they're more effective when you, um, when you look at it in terms of zones. Now, the truth is, Right, we have. Let's just say, we have. I'm going to give you a case study over here. Okay, we got one swing high, two swing high, three swing highs. Okay, and we got one swing high, two swing high, three swing high. Oh, okay, this one you have you have about an area about this area. Let's just say you have this area over here. Is there a way I can have a ticker? No, nah, I can't have a oh highlighter, right? Where's my highlighter? Okay, wrong color. Sorry. Okay. Okay. In this case, you have oh, I never knew the highlighter. <laughs> Was oh, so terrible. Okay, you got this level over here. Okay, in this case, you have. Oh, Control Z doesn't work. Okay, in this case, you have. This level over here. Okay, now this is. This is option A. This is option B. Which is stronger? Right, which is stronger? Is A stronger or is B stronger? This one has one, two, three. This one has one, two, three, four. A lot of you guys are answering B. Right, a lot of you guys are answering B. Right. Um, and the answer is A. <laughs> The answer is A, right? Why it is A? Why is A? It's because A has a smaller area, right? With three swing highs, right? You, uh, you have a nice strong area over here compared to this area over here. The zone is bigger, sure. You manage to get the fourth level, but it compromises your zone. It compromises how, you know, it compromises your zone. Imagine, right? It's, it's like, it's like paper, you know, when you when you're paper and you fold it, you, you fold it and you fold it and you fold it many, many times, right? It becomes like this single paper and it's very, very strong. But if the paper, you only fold it like you fold it twice and three times, you can still tear it, right? But if you fold it one time, two times, three times, four times, five, six, seven, eight times, and it's a very thick layer, but you try to tear it, it's very tough. It's the same thing with support and resistance, right? Four has more confirmations, but it compromises the thickness. Right, the thicker a uh, support and resistance area, the weaker it is. Okay, the thicker a uh, uh, a zone, um, the weaker it is, and that's one of the important things I want uh, you guys to take away. Okay. Now let's say um, let's continue. Let's continue. Right. Um, now let's talk about the psychology of the pullback. Now that I've taught you guys swing highs and swing lows, I'm gonna uh, share with you a little bit about. Um, pullback support and pullback resistance. They are my favorite. They're my favorite um, support and resistance, right? More than anything else I'm teaching, right? This support and resistance is one of my favorite. And it also happens to be one of the most effective, okay? One of the most effective. Now, okay, the psychology of the pullback, 
let me teach you about the psychology of the pullback. Now, so a pullback happens like this, right? So you got price has uh, reacted once, reacted two times, reacted three times, right? So you got resistance area. Now when price comes up to here, right? You got one swing high, two swing high, three swing highs, right? What do you think most traders are doing over here? Right. Assume that we do not, we are not able to see anything by the side over here. Are more traders looking to sell or more traders looking to buy when price is over here? Are more traders looking to sell or are more traders looking to buy? Right, I got quite a number to say sell, 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 sell. Sell, buy, buy. All right, okay. Well, it's a little bit of a split, right? You got uh, Sarah saying sell. We got uh, Ibrahim, George saying sell. Uh, Ibrahim says buy. Kelvin sell. Mine is sell because of price failure, right? All right. So yeah, the majority of people, right? Majority of people at this point here, assuming price has not broken out yet, they are actually selling. They're looking to sell because... It only makes sense, right? Because if price reverse once, it reverse twice, reverse three times, there's a nice little chance that price will reverse fourth time, right? Because that is called a swing high resistance, right? Now, one of my favorite trades, I mean, of course, we can use that to trade. We usually use that in combining with Fibonacci, uh, projections, retracements, extensions, expansions, you know, Ichimoku, trend lines, you know, combine the trade. But if we're just looking at it purely in support and resistance and you see that price has repeatedly failed to break past this level, all right, what you're likely to do is to sell there. Now, this is the beauty of it. What happens when price breaks past this level? When price breaks past this level, the people who are selling, they, they are now suffering losses. Okay, they're suffering losses, right? You know, they're losing a little bit of money. Right, the, they're losing money, they're losing money, they're losing money, right? The, they're being taken on a right. They start questioning their existence. They're like, oh man, I should not trade, right? I'm losing so much, I'm losing so much, I can't sleep at night. Oh wow, you know, it's the universe against me. What should I do next, right? What do I do? You know, when they sell my house, when I really know they, they go on this, this nightmare, right? Because most of the time, you know, traders, depending on stop loss, most of the time they, they just let it ride, right? And the majority of these traders, right, they're just being taken for a ride, right? They are holding on to their selling positions. They are being taken for a roller coaster of an emotional journey, right? They're suffering losses and, you know, it's not good. They stay up all night and they're like, oh man, you know, this is tough, right? Why am I suffering so much losses? Now, now price then starts to come down here and they start to come down. They're like, hey, you know what, maybe... There is hope in this world after all. All is not lost. You know, there is, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? You know, just, it's not that bad. You know, I can live to fight another day. You know, it starts going down, going down and going down and going down. And it goes back to the entry, the entry where they exited from. At this level, if you were a trader who initially held onto your selling positions over here, would you, what would you do here? Would you sell more? Will you close out your trade? What will you do when price finally comes back down to here? We got Charles saying you keep the trade. Richie saying close, close, hedge. Matthew, when you're saying hedge, I'm just going to assume that you're going to close the trade. Right? So I'm going to touch on the, the, um, the myth of hedging in a bit. And more, and more entry. All right, all right. So strong supply. All right. So yeah, quite a number of you guys say close. And yes, so when you close the trade, you need to square it off, right? So essentially you buy, right? To close off um, 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 your short position, you buy, correct? If you have short positions, you need to close it off. You need to buy. So when you buy, a whole bunch of people would be buying and that causes the prices to do a nice little bounce. This is the psychology of the pullback trade. So people are saying, buy on the pullback, buy on the pullback. Why is a pullback working, right? It works particularly well for this kind of horizontal pullback where once price kind of breaks out of it and it comes back, right? It comes back all the way over here, right? If it comes back here, the reason why the pullback works very well is because the, there were a whole bunch of people here that were thinking it's going to drop, right? They were taken for a ride. The moment it comes back down to here, 
right? They're going to square it off, meaning that they're going to close off the trade. To close off a selling position, you need to buy. So when you buy, along with everyone else who is jumping in on the trade, right? That's why you tend to see price make a nice little bounce. So that is the psychology of the pullback and it's one of the most effective um, support and resistance levels. Now, um, I, I noticed, right, Marco, and actually a couple of people um, did mention hedge. You know, what's the concept of hedging? How many of you guys um, happen to use hedging in your trading strategy? Can you uh, maybe um, if you do or if you don't, maybe you can share it in the in the check section so I can get a rough gauge. Yeah, so I can see that, uh, Dioven. Um, always do it on demo. Is that count? It's kind of like a counter trade, like hedging a bit, right? George doesn't do it, right? Um, her mother doesn't do it. I uh, let me see the other attendees, right? Okay, so what does hedging mean? Hedging means that if you if you have short Let's just say you're short 100 positions over here. Hedging means that you plus 100 positions over here. You buy a trade in the other direction. Um, right. So, <laughs> so let me talk about the concept of hedging. Right. That means you, you enter the trade. You, you, if you're short over here, you enter a trade plus 100. You, know, you hedge. So your risk exposure is zero. If price goes up or price goes down, your risk exposure is zero. Now, when it comes to hedging, especially CFDs, why it is not so? Um, who knows what swap is, right? Who knows what swap is? You pay swap, um, you know, when you hold your trades overnight, overnight charges and stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a charge overnight, right? That's right, Richie, right? So. Technically, people think about it, right? That swap is, I uh, uh, no. if you, yeah, I can see your answers are correct, right? So you know, swap is like uh, overnight charges, right? So if you think about hedging, you have zero exposure. The problem is that if you are playing swaps on this, you now pay swaps on this, right? If you're playing commission on this, right? You got a commission per trade. Now you're playing commission on this. So you're not having zero exposure. You're having double swaps and you're having double, right? You're having double, you're paying double commission. Okay? Yes, and every Wednesday and Friday, swaps are three times. So even though you think that you're hedging, you have zero exposure, you end up paying double the amount because you need to pay to buy a position, right? In the spirit of hedging. So you end up paying double the commission and pay double the swap. That is the danger of hedging. Versus if you just close off this trade, right? If you just close off the trade instead of hedging it, right? You're not paying double the commission. You're just uh, closing off your trade and you're reducing your exposure on swaps, right? You're not just holding the trade for another one month. You need to pay swaps for another one month, right? So that's why when it comes to hedge, hedging, it's not just a zero-sum game. It might be a negative-sum game, especially in CFD trading. There are times to hedge your risk. Right, there are times you hedge your risk when you're trading futures. Right, you want to lock in the price of oil, you know, lock in the price of gold because of your uh, the business needs that you have. Right, there's a concept to hedging there. Right, but um, the traditional um, hedging that most people use in trading is not what they um, is is not that effective because because of the commissions you pay. Right, I believe uh, for some futures you don't even pay the commissions. Right, and that's the thing. Uh, which you should um, take a look at, right? If you're trading, if you love to hedge, Tick Mill has this great thing, right? And I encourage you guys to search Tick Mill Futures. Very few people know that Tick Mill actually has futures, right? As you can see over here, right? Tick Mill actually has futures, right? Trade futures with Tick Mill. You can see a whole bunch of stuff over here, right? Um, these are not the only ones they have, right? They have an entire range of instruments that you can have over here, you know, um, I think we uh, show 100. It's quite a wide range of instruments, uh, futures you can trade. Very useful, right? If you're hedging, right? So if you want to go into the concept of hedging, it's very useful, right? At the same time, you know, if you want to look at volume, right? You notice that some of the stuff here, you got the Japanese yen, 
right? If you are looking for volume, uh, reliable volume, uh, when it comes to trading, especially currencies, right? Which you know, you know, it's not it's subjective from broker to broker. But if you're looking for volume, right, a great place of uh, especially looking at volume for FX is actually to look at um, futures because it trades through a centralized exchange. Hence, your volume is much more reliable. Okay, so again, it goes all the way back to um, hedging. I know I like to digress a bit, but this kind of general knowledge is very useful when it comes to trading, right? Even if you reduce, you know, tweak your strategy so you don't double enter into positions to pay double the swap and double the commissions, that might be the thing that you need to nudge your profit factor from 0 0.95 to maybe 1.03, right? And to be a profitable trader, right? And these are the things because sometimes people don't realize that trading, right? A large part of trading, also you, you need to factor in the spreads, you need to factor in the commissions, you need to factor in the swaps, right? Because all that eat away from your profit, okay? Now, let's, um, let's go back to today's topic. Let's go back to today's topic. I want to teach you the, the opposite is true for uh, pullback resistance. So this one is what we're calling pullback support. This one we're talking about pullback resistance. Same thing, you look for prices to bounce minimally two to three times, right? Two to three times. If form a nice little support area, price finally breaks this level, right? The traders who are expecting it to go up are now holding onto their long positions and they're being taken for, right? They're losing a lot of money. So what happens is that when price finally comes back uh, to the entry, they're going to close off their position. Um, uh, okay, touch typing. I have no idea what touch typing means. <laughs> if you don't mind, uh, maybe expanding it a little bit more, right? So yeah, every, anyone who is uh, who gets into a trade, a long position here, by the time price comes back here, they're looking to get out of their position. They're looking to close off their position. Right, and this is where they basically go short, you know, to to net off the position, and that is what gives you the momentum, the the volume, right, to really push prices down, really effective in calling reversals, right. There is a pullback resistance. We we'll look at the markets right now to find some examples of it, right. Mm -hmm. We we'll look at markets right now to find some examples of it. So, an example over here, right. If you notice. If you notice, this was a nice little swing low, right? Let's just do a little bit of a bar replay. Uh, bar replay again, sorry. Bar replay feature over here. Nice little bit of a swing low over here, okay? Why is it a nice swing low? Nice swing low over here, right? And you can see price form a nice little support level over here, correct? We're talking, let me just uh, work through it with you guys. Bounce up nicely, bounce up nicely, price coming all the way down, people expect it to bounce up, right? People are expecting it to bounce up, right? So it drops, drops, aish. Drops, 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 right? And it finally comes here, right? Everyone's expecting prices to kind of do a nice little bounce over here. But what happens is that prices don't bounce and instead it drops. So when it drops, the moment it breaks this level, it goes from a swing low support to a pullback support. Okay? It goes from a swing low support to a pullback support. Okay? The drops, 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 drops. All right. Okay, we're being taken for, right? The people who are holding onto their original long positions are being taken for one hell of a right. Right, the starting question, man, this is tough. I should not, you know, I, I should have put my stop loss closer. I should have closed on my trade, right? They are, you know, being taken for a tough time, just like what we said, right? And prices start to inch back over here. It starts to inch back, inch back, inch back, right? You can see it's starting to come back over here, right? And what happens when prices, prices, um, let's see, let's see, this prices start. There you go. The moment it touches here, right? Don't zoom in here. Can you see? The moment it touches this, right? People close off their trade, right? They have pending positions, their stop loss at break even or the stop loss will cut off the trade, right? The moment it happens, this movement is very, very accursed, very, very often, right? Let me just zoom in over here. This movement over here happens very often where price is rejected from there, 
right? And what happens from there? You know, prices, you know, test one more time, one more time, and it goes down, right? So this, right, happens very, very often in the pullback resistance and right? a pullback support, right? You will notice it happens a lot of times in the market structure, right? Usually, if it's only one time, it's less effective. You can combine once or twice, right? You can find two swing lows, which are finally broken. That is usually a good sign of a, a, to play a good pullback trade, right? It is not very effective if it's, if it's only one time, right? So, for example, if market is trending downwards like that, you know, there's only like, um, like it's only one, uh, one swing low level, right? It's not that effective, right? To just take the trade from here, Right, and then you take another trip from here, another trip from here. That is too, it's too fairy tale, right? It's not going to be that effective, right? So even though we're looking at the downtrend over here, right? You can see this movement down here. I actually factored in this big support level over here, right? It's important for me to factor in that this swing low, this swing low, and this swing low are both connected. Wow, well, that's a very nice straight line. Right, that just drew freehand. Right, uh, years of experience. I'm so lucky. Right. Oh wow, look at that man. Comes with experience, I guess. <laughs> now, okay, so yeah, so that that is a concept of a uh, pullback support. Happens very very often, right? Let Let's see. Um, let me just try to find uh different kind of examples over here. Okay, this is a very very nice example. I want to touch on it too. Right. Um, let's replay. Yes. Maybe over here. The more times it bounces off, the better, right? So we can see that there is um, there's a nice reaction from here, reaction from here, reaction from here, right? All around this area over here, okay? Really, really nice reactions. So we're gonna highlight this as a nice little bit of a resistance area over here, okay? So price has reacted off multiple times when price comes back up here again, right? Inching up, inching up, inching up. Holy smokes, okay. We expect the prices to reverse from here. Majority of people, because of the one, two, three swing high resistance over here, right? However, price does not break, uh, does not reverse and it goes up. As you can see over here, right? Now this is the beauty of it, right? So you can see price go up, go up, go up, go up. So people are being taken for a ride over here. They don't like it. Right, but the pullback happens really quickly. I think there you go. So it comes all the way up to then it pulls back. Now, this is what I call the you know, one this is the pullback that we're looking for to go up, right? So it does a nice little pullback. You can see pulls back to the area, pulls back to the area, and then it starts going from there. As you can see, right, this is the pullback that you're looking for to take the trade. You might have multiple opportunities to get in, right? But this is a very, very uh, effective. The more, the more levels, right? If one, two is the minimum, okay? Two is the minimum, but you can find more than two. If you can find, if you can find three, right? If you can find four, right? Four levels that finally get broken. Look for the pullback, get in on the trade. You know, it's a pretty decent uh, um, probability of getting a profitable trade on that, right? One of my favorites, right? Of course, in this case, when you're making the pullback, some additional considerations, right? You can consider, right? The, yikes, nope. Uh, over here, right? Where's my templates? 23% retracement that people might be looking for, right? 23% retracement, Maybe even a nice uh, trend line support that goes up all the way, right? That supports it, I believe. There was a sort of a trend line. Yeah. Could be a channel support too, right? Different levels that suggest that price will bounce up from here. Okay, so when you all combine it together, you have a higher probability trade. So even though you're, um, when it comes to trading, right? It's not about finding the, the perfect uh, blueprint to um, profitability. Right. Instead, it's about finding uh, multiple different um, studies that agree with each other. Okay, what I mean by that? What I mean by that? Okay, um, let's just say, 
look at we uh we're guys right so um majority of guys of us are guys uh let's just say we want to buy a car uh, we want to buy a car right so you um if you go if you go to a car um if you go to a mercedes right if you go to a mercedes car dealership right and you ask them is mercedes a good brand what what are they going to say <laughs> are they going to say yes or are they going to say no right well majority of them they're going to say yes yeah it's going to say yes correct right because it is them right <laughs> they say get out <laughs> right they say, get out get out buy something right uh say that, that that's the thing you know, when you go to this kind of uh yeah they're trying to sell it right so that's the thing but when, um when you go to a BMW workshop, they're going to say, yeah, BMW is great. Mercedes sucks, right? If you go to uh, Audi, Audi is going to say, yeah, Audi rocks, right? But Mercedes sucks, right? But what if, so, so you can see, they're all, you know, they're all supporting. In each camp, they only support their own camp, right? So if you're like the Mercedes camp, you could be like a stochastic RSI, MACD. You're all in the same camp. You're all going to say that the market is overbought, right? If you're looking at... Um, if you're looking at momentum, you're looking at moving averages, right? Moving averages could be the BMWs, right? All of them are going to say, yeah, 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 you know, the market is overbought, right? So they're all going to agree with each other. But what if, you know, the people at Mercedes say, yeah, you know, um, actually Tesla is pretty good, right? The people at BMW say, yeah, you know, um, Tesla is pretty good too, right? The people at Audi say, yeah, Tesla is pretty good, right? If different groups of people <clears throat> all say something else is pretty good. Then you can trust it even more. And there's a higher probability that Tesla is actually pretty good. And that's a concept when it comes to trading. Do not get overexcited when everyone in Mercedes is telling you that the Mercedes is good. What do I mean by that? Is that don't get overexcited when the stochastic oscillator, the RSI indicator, the MACD indicator, right? All of them are telling you that the market is overbought because they are all in the same car showroom. They're all selling you the same Mercedes, right? Don't get overexcited when the moving average, right? The Ichimoku cloud, the channel, they're all telling you that the market is bullish. They're all the same showroom, right? But if different studies, different groups of people tell you that something is good, then you know you're onto something, right? It's always... I know I just picked this, uh, picked this um, example out of the air, but I hope it uh, gets you a better idea when it comes to trading that, you know, don't just, don't just use support and resistance, right? So in this example here, don't just use, I, where am I? Don't just use support, right? Don't, uh, you must throw in support, right? Then, of course, you throw in, uh, maybe you throw in channels. You can throw in, oh, sorry, this is a terrible channel, right? Throw in channels. Right. After you train channels, maybe you train an Ichi, Ichimoku. Right. After you train Ichimoku, maybe you do a Fibonacci retracement. <clears throat> so instead of just one study, right, you have the support and resistance camp. You got the channel camp. You got the Ichimoku camp. You got the Fibonacci camp. Right. You got multiple people telling you that the levels are good. Right, and that makes it a better trade, it increases your chance of getting into a profitable trade. Okay, and that's one very, very important thing that I want to teach you guys when it comes to trading. Okay, the last thing I want to touch on, of course, is over here the overlap support and overlap resistance. Overlap is very simple. If this, when price broke out, if this was a if this was a pullback, when price finally bounces off the pullback. The moment price bounces off the pullback support, it turns into an overlap support. It shows that it's an area of interest. <coughs> uh, yeah, it's running out of breath. Right, it shows that it's an area of interest, right? Meaning that you can see that there's one resistance here. Price reacted off here. Yeah, resistance becomes support. And basically, price, prices respect this level. When prices come back up there, you can see it react off there again and it comes down. The more time price react, the bottom and the top, the bottom and the top, that's where it becomes a pretty strong overlap, a pretty strong overlap support or resistance, right? That's one of the key things 
uh, uh, that's one of the key things I want to show you guys and how you can combine it all together, right? So it, um, in this example, right, we have, uh, this is the pullback resistance that we're looking for, right? So this is a very simple example. Pullback resistance over here, Ichimoku cloud resistance over here, right? And I think uh, maybe it's a 23% Fibonacci retracement over here. You combine one, you combine two, you combine three, right? You can see over here. Right? Oh, basically, that's how you combine multiple of it together, right? Uh, let me see where's my example over here, right? You combine one, you combine two, you combine three, you combine four. That gives you the highest probability of this bounce happening over here, okay? that gives you the highest probability of this bounce happening over here. And I hope, um, I hope you get the, the idea, right? Um, of course, the Q&A session is still open. Right? So if you have questions that you need to clarify regarding this trading approach, please um, send them through. I do want to let you guys know that we're going to touch on uh, trend lines and channels uh, in our next session. Right? I'm going to send you the link here. I wonder if there's another link. Um, Right, yep, this link, I'm gonna send it to you guys, right? Um this link over here. Oh, sorry, I send it to the host and panelists. I'm gonna send it to everyone. Um how many um how are you uh, um what are you trying to confirm first? Right. So please sign up for this. Is our next session is our next session on the um trend lines and channels, right? It really takes a deep dive into trend lines and channels, right? Um, do you use weeks? Do you not use weeks? How many touches, right? How to use it as uh as part of a larger trading strategy? Uh please check that one out. Right. Um, and I'm going to do um, as our because we didn't manage uh, to record some of the past um, poll results. Right. I'm going to run a uh, a simple poll right now. Right. Uh, for you guys. Right. Uh, just so to share some feedback that you guys have for me to help help me be a better trader. Uh, help me uh, run these webinars slightly better for you guys. Right. Um, there you go. Uh, how you rate this webinar from one is to five. Uh, five being the best. Right. So this helps me know um, how I can better improve. Of course, you know, you, you can rate it anything you want, right? You can rate it anything you want, right? Uh, but don't worry, I won't hunt you down with rate one. But if you do rate it, um, you know, whether it's uh, one or two or three, right? Let me know. Let me know which areas you want to see me improve a little bit more on. Send it in the comment section, right? And we're always trying to fine tune and improve our webinars uh, a bit more and a bit more so that, you know, we can teach you guys better uh, to be better traders. Right. Uh, that's why I'm trying to focus a lot more over here. Right. It's not just um, it's not just providing you guys the best kind of trading instruments. Right. But we're always trying to listen to you guys. Right. What do you want to learn more? Do you want to learn about Fibonacci? Do you want to learn about Elliott Wave? Do you want to learn about harmonics? Uh, how advanced do you want to go? Do you want to go about trade management? Right. Um, Noel. Yes, I'll be answering that in a second. Right. A copy of this is actually on the Tick Meal YouTube. Okay. Right, so um, all right, um, equal highs, equal lows. All right, um, let me just end this poll right now. We got okay, we got about uh fifty five percent who participated, right? Uh, yeah, I think it's here. Yeah, fifty five percent that participated. Right, I'm gonna end this poll. Right, I'm gonna share the results with you guys. Right, um, thank you very much. Right, two of you guys rated one. It breaks my heart, but. <laughs> That is okay, right? Let me know. Um, let me know if yeah, five is the highest score. Get free. You want to rate me ten? That'd be great too, right? But yeah, let me know if um if there's any way I can improve, right? I'll do my best. Of course, um, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys can see the screen yet, but I'll, I'll do my best to uh to add on, uh, whichever you feel might be missing, right? And um, send in the comment section because there's no other way I would know how to uh know your feedback unless you send in the comment section. Alright, guys. Okay, right. Um, I'm gonna end this poll over here, right? Um, <laughs> no, no, I'm not gonna be so bad. I don't kick them out, right? I always take it as, uh, as as good feedback. All right, so guys, right? So you wanna go to YouTube, take meal, right? I'm gonna show you how to get access to that. I'm gonna send you the playlist. Here you go, Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass. I'm gonna send it to everyone over here. Is there any more education about Forex we can get? Yes, so we're gonna launch our VIP room soon. I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna show it to you, 
right? If you want, right? Just to get lay have a glimpse, uh, glimpse on it. Okay, um, yeah. So if you want to tune in, right? That is the uh, these are some of the uh past webinars you can tune in. I'm just gonna show you, uh, the ultimate uh the take me VIP room. Uh, for those of you guys who are here for the first time who have not seen it, right? I'm gonna share my screen. You share. I here. Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can see my screen over here, right? This is the VIP room, which well, in the final stage of compliance launch, right? Uh, it's actually a VIP room where um, as long as you're a tick new client, right? You get to come in here. We have, um, we have ranks, we have badges, you know, we have leaderboards where you can come in. But most importantly, right? Let's just say you have a question, right? Let's just say you have a question on, on pound dollar. Right, so you got all different prop traders over here. You have a question on pound dollar, it actually helps you, right? Let's just say you're looking at this and you're like, hey, um, do you think price might reverse from here? Right, you could just draw this resistance area over here and you can do this at mention, right? At mention, uh, at mention Desmond, right? And like, hey, do you think price might reverse from this area? What area are you referring to? You just highlight the text. You click this link object to text. You select the object that it just drew on the chart. And then you confirm and send it true. Right? So what happens is that when I'm reading it for the first time, you can see, hey, Desmond, do you think price might reverse from this area? And when you hover your mouse over it, you can see that the area lights up. So I know exactly what you are referring to. I can click this part here and I can see that uh, you know, I can have a dedicated discussion knowing which level you are referring to, right? So I can add in my own comments. You know, I can, I can, uh, I can add in my own comments. And I, I can, hey buddy, right? I can, you know, all the stuff like, you know, reacting to messages, stuff like this, right? It's all, it's all built into this VIP room, right? Uh, we're going to roll out access to it soon, right? Um, um, no, I do not trade for others, Kanti, right? But we actually guide them Right in this trading room, so we have all the whole range of instruments from futures to FX to um, to indices. Right, we got fundamental news. We got all everything here in the VIP room. Help to be help you to be a better trader. Right, it should be rolled out uh, in the next couple of weeks once we clear uh, the last bit of stuff with compliance. But it's a fun place where you know if you want, you can add mention me. You can add mention our famous Patrick Munelli. Right, you can talk about the different. Uh, oh, sorry, oh you can't mention it here. Right, the different hashtags. Right, you want to say like, like Desmond, take a look at a euro dollar, you know, euro dollar for me, right? It's all over there, right? You can click on this, jumps to euro dollar. It's a very, very interactive kind of um, place where you can practice your analysis in real time and we can correct you in real time on it. Okay, so yeah, it's uh, this is stay tuned, right? Um, we should be rolling out to you. Um, uh, um, that, well, it's actually 20, um, it, will, it should be manned by analysts um, throughout the day, five days a week, probably not over the weekend, right? Um, I can have Richie asking, you know, um, uh, you know, what are the small or less active hours of the VIP room, right? It's more or less active during the weekend, no, the, during the weekdays, right? Different analysts will be tuning in to help you guys, right? You can read up our profiles, you can ask us questions over there, right? Um, so one thing that I need, we need to run a poll on, Right. Uh, do leave your responses so we know um, who are the people who are interested and we can reach out to when we're going to launch it first. Right. Um, let's see. Wh where is it? Um, is it a poll? Yeah, I can. I'm going to launch this quick poll. Right. Um, and can let us know. Right. Let us know would such a live trading room, a VIP room, be useful in helping you learn, you know, to trade better. All right. So we know that how uh, how soon we, we can roll this out to you guys. Right, we are, how can prioritize it, right? Um, you will basically get direct access to uh, prop traders, right? Traders who trade for a living, traders, award-winning traders, right? Uh, you know, you get a direct line to them. You can say, hey, Desmond, what's your view on gold? Right? Hey, Desmond, what's your view on euro dollar? Right, and we able to jump in and say, hey, what time frame are you looking at? I can do our best, kind of help you out over there, okay? Right, yeah, but so th th this is just um, uh, part one of two questions, right? To, to have a rough quick gauge, on um on the interest level of this VIP room, okay. Just give me a second, right? Uh, we'll close this in the next ten seconds or so. Right. 
Okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot to. I, we need to record this for um to share with the the marketing team, right? And then the last question I have, right, is that um for you guys, right? Would you um if we require you to have a Tinkmill account to get access to this VIP room, would it be okay with you, right? If you're already a Tinkmill client, just you know put you already a Tinkmill client. But if something where you know we're just thinking like um what are the um what are requirements to get access? We're trying to keep it free, right? We're trying to keep it free such that, you know, uh, you don't need to pay any money to get access into it, right? Instead, as long as you have a Tinkmill account, right? Minimum 500, maybe $1,000, right? And then we'll give you access to it, right? That is the thing which we want to check with you guys if it's okay, right? And, you know, we want to try and make it as, as accessible to everyone as possible, right? And, and so this is one of the important questions which we like to ask you guys to get a quick gauge, right? Whether um, uh, this is fine with you. Right. Uh, if you're already a Tinkmill client, the majority of you guys are already Tinkmill client. That's great. Right. Otherwise, yeah. Um, I can see the majority of you actually say yes, which is uh, which is great. Right. And if it's no, it's purely fine too. Right. We should be released in the next two weeks. Right. Um. Yeah. So Matteo, uh, access to the Tinkmill VIP room should be released in the next couple of weeks. Right. <laughs> Wait for Luna to pick up again. Right. Yeah. I know. If you are going to Luna, it's it's tough stuff, man. It's tough stuff. Okay, all right. Let me just get this done. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll over here. Okay, guys. Um, thank you very much. Uh, for the, for sticking through this webinar, right? Um. Uh, okay. It's a uh, techno. If you want to, if you want to see all my previous webinars, right, I'm just gonna send it in this comment section here. Right, tune in here. Right, that's where you can see all the previous webinars. I'll be touching more advanced topics. We might be going towards. A rotation between live market analysis and uh, a, a weekly session where, where every Monday we're looking at educational and webinars, educational webinars, educational webinars, right? It is possible to get into the Tickmill VIP room. We will let you know once it's available, okay? Can't you answer that in a bit, all right, in our next session because I need to hand over the time to the next webinar, a uh, person who's going to jump on his next webinar soon. Thank you very much for. Um, for sticking through this entire webinar. I really, am, I really enjoyed you guys with me, right? Bear with me, I think I'm losing my voice a bit. There's also I lose my voice, right? But yeah, I know it's been a great time. Uh, yeah, some of you guys I can see asking in private that, um, yeah, my baby's fine. I just became a dad three days, uh, three weeks ago, right? So <laughs> I'm not sure you can see my IVEX, right? I'm not sure you can see my IVEX, right? I think, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys, right? I, I want to name him Elliot. Right, so I can always have the forever running joke that you know I like to teach the Elliot wave theory, right? <laughs> Everyone name it, yeah, yeah, that's right, All right, Elliot. But, but yeah, my um my wife didn't allow me to name him Elliot, so his name is Lucas, right? So well, right, it works, it works, yeah. But yeah, if you Elliot is a headache, yeah, trust me, I would. Maybe you, I would can say yeah, oh man, Elliot is driving me nuts. Right, and then she'll say, "How dare you say that?" They're like, "Oh no, 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 no!" I mean, Elliot, uh, the Elliot wave is driving me nuts. <laughs> oh well, but yeah, if only I could do that, you know. Um, it's funny because um, when when I uh, now we're a little bit off topic, so you know, if you want to jump off the webinar, feel free to jump off the webinar, right? And we're not going to touch on anything more educational, right? Uh, Amara, don't worry, right? But yeah, the, um, there's a point, right, when my wife, uh, because usually after the wife, you know, she she delivers. Right, the husband goes down and register the name, right? So, you know, I was holding the paper. I was like, oh man, I have this paper. I can write down anything I want <laughs> and she can't do anything, right? I can give him any name. I can name him Ronaldo, right? I can name him Messi. <laughs> anything and she won't have, she, she won't have a say, right? She might be pissed, but she might not realize, right? It was so tempting. I was like, yeah, you know what? He's a guy. What's wrong with Ronaldo? No, I think it's a nice name. Right, but yeah, in the end, my uh, my common sense, right, and maybe my my survival instinct prevailed. Where right? I was like, Desmond, if you treasure your life, you'll probably just listen to what your wife just told you. Just write the name Lucas and get out of there, right? Don't try to give him a funny middle name, Lucas Messi, Lucas Mora, or something. Write it and yeah, just get out. <laughs> so that's why I'm here today. I'm alive. I'm alive, right? Because my common sense has prevailed and kept me alive. <laughs> Anyway, guys, yeah, the next webinar will be in in, in uh, the next webinar will be in two weeks, 
right? We might be moving to a weekly session, right? Rotating between live um, um, practice and theory, practice and theory. So every month, uh, every alternate session, maybe for life, life market analysis, we practice what we learn, right? And every alternate session, you know, it'll be an educational session where we learn stuff together. Yeah, photo, yeah, photo your wife. That's right, you'll say, right? Happy wife, happy life. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'm glad to see so many of you guys resonate with what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Right. Next time, I have a little bit more time, right? Uh, I can hang out, have some whiskey session with you guys. Right. Now that market's opening, whoever flies into Singapore, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm here in Singapore. You know, if you happen to be around Singapore, let me know. I can have you as a guest session. You know, we can have a nice drink together, right? Um, it'll be a fun session. Right. Uh, we love you guys over here in Singapore. Right. Uh, oh, it'll be there in July. It'll be the great. That'd be great, Guzman. Let me know. Right. Let me know. We can go out for a drink. We can swing by the office. It'd be a fun time. All right. It's good stuff, man. Good stuff. All right. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. Remember, stay safe, trade safe. Right. And I'll catch you guys in the next webinar. All right. Peace out, homies. Take care. Bye bye. That's nice techno, right? I'll see you guys either in the webinar or in, or, in, or, or in person when you swing by. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Kanizoa, Bernard, Noel, Kelvin, Firos, Godfrey. Cool. Thank you very much, Matteo. See you guys soon. Peace out, guys. Peace out.